Good evening and thank you for joining us here today. Law enforcement is a male dominated profession. However, we rarely get to see into the hearts and minds of those who serve. So in honor of Father's Day, we will do just that as we spend the next 45 minutes speaking with the men on the panel who are not only DeKalb County police officers, but fathers as well. The goal tonight is simply to give you a glimpse of the man behind the badge. And today we'll be starting with Captain Albritton. Good evening. I'm Captain Philip Albritton, known as Clint to family and friends. I've been with DeKalb County Police for 23 years, married for 20 and a half, and have four children, a son and three daughters. Our family has three dogs, five cats, a ferret, and 58 chickens, each of which has a name and is considered a member of the family. Some of the things to me that are important are the well-being of my family, that our home is a safe place, and that my children don't have to experience some of the struggles that I did as, when I, as growing up, and that they have more opportunities than I did, specifically to pursue the things that bring them joy and engage in talents and the things that they like to do. Some of my personal interests and hobbies include dirt biking, uh, doing outdoor yard work, playing games, and spending time with my family. Thank you. Sounds like you have a full plate there. <laughs> yes. Thank you for sharing. Officer Brooks, same question. Who are you? Good afternoon. My name is Marcus E. Brooks. I'm a native of West Point, Mississippi. Come from a household of four, which I am the youngest. Uh, after high school, I attended the University of Mississippi. I had a track scholarship where I was an All-American in the 400 meters. After I finished college, I later got married and transferred to Georgia, where I've now served with the DeKalb County Police Department for 17 and a half years. I am currently in the community policing unit at this time. Thank you. Assistant Chief Padrick, who are you and what drives you? Good evening, and thanks for putting this on, and thanks for having us this evening. Um, I'm Greg Padrick. I'm the Assistant Chief. I'm over our Criminal Investigations Division. Uh, I've had the uh, pleasure of serving DeKalb County for 26 years. Uh, prior to serving the police department, I served in the United States Marine Corps. Uh, I'm a father of three. I have three uh, great children, two sons and a daughter. And um, what drives me would be purpose. Uh, I think it's important to have purpose in life and being able to work with and help others uh, and giving back to the community gives me purpose. And that's a, a big part of what drives me. And being assigned to the Criminal Investigations Division, how do you feel that that serves your purpose? Uh, being part of the Criminal Investigations Division, as you know, uh, I was also over the Uniform Division, but Uniform Division has a different function. As I transition to the Criminal Investigation Division, I get to be a part of the investigation and, and the follow through with what goes on in people's day to day lives and investigations that we're conducting. Uh, so, Getting that uh, thorough look through each and every case that we investigate and seeing those cases to closure is very important and it definitely gives me a lot of purpose. Thank you. Lieutenant Harris, same question. Who are you and what drives you? Um, my name is Sean Harris. I'm a police lieutenant, the morning watch commander assigned to East Precinct. I uh, was raised by a single parent, my mom. I'm from Maryland. Upon graduation, upon graduating high school, I joined the uh, United States Army. Um, after the Army, I came into law enforcement and joined the Academy. Um, I'm currently married. I have four kids. I was previously married, and which uh, I got divorced, and uh, we had two daughters. And soon after the divorce, uh, ex-wife, she died in a vehicle accident. So we had to tell, we had to tell our, um, my current wife, we had to tell our daughters that uh, their mother had perished. And now, you know, uh, I've made sure that they went to college, they got their masters, they're now successful. Uh, I have a son that's 17 years old, I have a younger daughter who's 13. I spent a lot of my off time with my son. He plays travel baseball and that's who I am. So it seems like your family drives you. Yes, ma'am. My family, I am family driven. Yes, ma'am. So I'm going to go to Sergeant Kim. If you can tell us the same, who are you and what drives you? 
Good evening, everybody. I am Sergeant J.W. Kim. I am the sergeant over our Tucker Investigative Unit at Tucker Precinct. I've been with DeKalb County Police Department for 15 years. I'm a second generation Korean American. My parents immigrated here in the early 80s. Um, we moved to New York first. I grew up there early childhood. Um, then we moved down to Georgia and we kind of bounced back between DeKalb and Gwinnett. Um, graduated high school here, went on to Georgia State University, um, studied criminal justice, earned my degree. And in 08, I um, enlisted to work for DeKalb County Police. Started here at Tucker Precinct as a uniform officer. Um, worked the road for seven years. Um, from there, I went on to uh, TIU, Tucker Investigative Unit, uh, as a detective. Did that for six years before being promoted to sergeant. Went to South, um, worked there for a bit on the road, and then now I'm back at Tucker Precinct and back in the investigative unit. So it looks like that's kind of my forte. Um, what drives me are my kids, my family. You know, I see them every day and I can't express how much I love them. Um, I love dealing with people, um, the interaction with people, whether it's good or bad. It's just I always learn something from it. And pretty much that's me as a person. Thank you. And we're going to end this question with Sergeant Jenkins. Hello, thank you. My name is uh, Sergeant Howard Jenkins. I'm a police officer here at DeKalb County. But I think my identity, who I see myself as, is a father. I say that because as a father of two teenage sons, it's the most important part of my life. It's how I define myself. It's how I want others to see me. Um, what drives me as a police officer is my commitment to community policing. As the supervisor of our Police Athletic League, I have the opportunity to mentor young people. Um, that's what wakes me up every day is I get to change their lives. One-on-one -on -one mentorship is how I think we have children change negative behaviors to positive. And with our Police Athletic League and the programs that we as a department support, I'm given that opportunity. So I've noticed that on some of our evening events, you have brought your two boys. So is there a way for you to balance both of those together? It is. Um, I wanted them to see what I do for two reasons. One, I want them to be proud of me as a father, but I also want them to see what I'm doing when I'm not with them. So if I'm missing something in their lives, I'm not off goofing off. I'm really trying to change people's lives, uh, either when I worked on the street as a police officer or now in PAL. And I think it's important when I've missed something in their lives, they know why. And so that's why I bring them out to events. Whenever it's appropriate to have your own children, I, I bring them out. So even though your drive is your family and your children, you still find that you're missing out. Most certainly. I mean, there are just times where the job calls for you to be away from your family. Thank you. Lieutenant Harris, has your initial why changed over the years? Yes, ma'am, it has. Initially, when I first started with the department, my why was I wanted to be the best police officer in DeKalb County, be an excellent, proactive officer, respond to 911 calls, try to make a difference in the community. As I got promoted, the why sort of changed. The why, my why changed because now I wanted to make sure that the officers that I supervised, that I led, that, they, that I provided the knowledge and ability to them for them to also be their best. I've assisted others in taking a promotional assessment, getting promoted. So I want to make sure that um, my why now I push down on my, on my officers so that they can be their best in, every, in any and everything that they do. So it seems like you came in as an I and you are now currently working as a we. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Team oriented. Make sure that, you know, not only I, but my team that we are the best at what we do. I will say I was out on a call with one of your teams, your team, and it was quite evident that they respected you because there was no challenging what you said. It just got done and it was seamless. So it's very obvious that your team respects you. Yes, ma'am. Officer Brooks, same question. My why has not changed. I am really driven because I like being out in the community. Um, it's a thrill to be out in the community when you're working with the public because they really don't understand what we do on a daily basis. Um, it's a joy to see the smiles on people's face when you're seeing someone that's less fortunate than you are. So my why has not changed. You were doing community policing before you were assigned to the community policing unit. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Because I met you at an event 
And when I saw that you put in for the unit, I wasn't surprised because you were already doing that. Yeah, I did a lot of going to the schools and reading the kids when they have like real men read. I did a lot of volunteering on career days, so I was always spending my time in the schools trying to give back to the students. So do you think that being in the community policing unit makes you less of an officer? No, it doesn't, because you still have to get out and strive to, to reach your goals that you're trying to achieve on your daily achievements. Thank you. Captain Aubritton, is it challenging to be a good father while still policing? It certainly can be. I think the bigger challenge is maintaining the balance that we need so that we can be good fathers. I know and work with a lot of very good officers who are great fathers. And the balance, we need to have a good balance among our physical health, our emotional health, our spiritual health, and our mental health. And also, what's extremely important is that we're able to separate work from our family life and our personal life and the things that go, home, that go on at home. Over the years, I found myself taking work home and it showing in the way that I either speak with or treat my wife or children. And there even have been times where in, in speaking with my children, my wife has had to come out and like, you're using your policeman voice. And it is a very uh, good reminder that we need that separation. And I think if we can maintain the balance and the separation, then it's very possible to be an outstanding father and also a good officer. And by you learning that, what can you tell a new officer that's just coming on? Because we've all struggled with balances. Uh, you're a little senior than most. So what advice would you give an officer coming on about balancing? It, that it is much easier to maintain balance than to get out of balance and have to reacquire it. Very nicely said. Thank you. Sergeant Kim, same question. Is it challenging to be a good father while policing? Yes, ma'am, it is. Um, it's challenging as policing, you know, can be uh, a demanding profession. We have long hours. We can be on call. We're exposed to stressful situations, and it's hard to separate that um, when we go home. Um, so as Captain Albritton has stated, when I go home, I try to, you know, enjoy the time with my kids and, you know, spend quality time with my family. Uh, try not to let the two mix together, but I do find myself at times um, having work bleed into home life where I could be at the playground watching kids and swooping, checking my emails. And, uh, you know, I can be ordering my kids around to clean their room and a police voice, hey, ma'am, clean your room. So. so you're still working on that balance? Yes, I am. Yeah, I think uh, it's something we'll be working on throughout our whole career. But Officer Brooks, same question for you. Do you find that it's challenging? Yes, it's very challenging because your schedules has a lot to do with it. You are, your kids are growing up, you miss out on a lot of activities as well. Like when they're in school, they have like plays or whatever, you're never able to attend those in activities or sporting events while the, they're in school. So it's very challenging when you're going on the evening watch because I work evening watch my whole career here at DeKalb County. So yes, you can miss out on a lot of things that your children are involved with. So how do you stay motivated? Because you're out here working with other people's children. You're out here just engaging with the community, but yet then you're missing out on some things at home. How does that not become a negative? So the way I stay motivated when I'm off, I do a lot of traveling. I stay out of the country a lot. So I try to spend time with my wife now. I took my sons and their fiancés on a cruise this March. So I try to do things to get them involved when I have a chance. Thank you. So, Lieutenant Harris, can you tell me what do you feel is the best part of your job? The best part of my job is the small victories. Um, when you can actually go to a scene and you can speak to, uh, you go to a call and there's children there, you can speak to a child and try to encourage them to do better and just provide them with guidance, necessary guidance and, and steps to try to be better and just try to tell them this is not the end of this situation doesn't define who you are. You define who you are. Your name is your brand. So just try to motivate them to, to whenever they put their name on something that make sure it's right to do their due diligence. So the small victories is what's, is what motivates me. 
So it seems like your job is becoming more about service than protecting? Yes, ma'am. You have to balance you have to balance both. You have to balance both. Sergeant Jenkins, same question for you. The best part of your job. I think the best part of my job is when I receive validation. And the validation that I find is important is from the citizens I serve. Um, currently in the Police Athletic League, it's mostly children. Um, I've had the pleasure of being in the community, on, off duty, just as much as on duty as I live in DeKalb County, and had children come up to me and smile and give me a high five and know me by name. And that drives me, that gives me the validation I need, that helps me with my work-life balance, it gives importance to everything, because here's a real person, was not prompted, came up to me, recognized what I do, with a smile, with a high five, tell, tells their mother where they know me from. They're like, where do you know this officer from? Oh, that's Sergeant Jenkins. He worked with us in the basketball program, or he worked with us in our career development program. That, that really gives me the validation that, that makes it all worth it. I will say that you've been doing a fantastic job since you've been assigned to Powell, uh, and you're a really good fit there, so keep up the good work. Thank you, ma'am. So now we're going to twist it around. So I'd like to know from Assistant Chief Padrick, what is the most difficult part of your job? The most difficult part, um, I, think, I think that changes throughout your career. Uh, when I first started, I, I would see that the most difficult part as, as a young officer was you know, coming to work, leaving my family, and not knowing if that was the last time you know, I would see them. You know, not knowing if you were going to make it home. But as, as I progressed throughout my career, I, I think the most difficult part became seeing the, the, the worst of the worst, seeing the tragedy and the victimization of others in our community, you know, the senseless violence that does not have to occur. That's, that's difficult, you know, and that's hard to uh, keep inside and not take home. Uh, so that, that's a difficult part. But uh, now, as, as I've gotten a little further along in my career, uh, and the way things have changed in society is uh, shaping the public perception of law enforcement in general. Uh, that's a difficult thing to do in today's society uh, because I truly believe that, that the men and women in law enforcement are in it for the right reasons. And uh, you know, conveying that to the public and, and presenting that image to the public is difficult in today's society. And I'll ask you as well, how do you stay motivated dealing with homicides, special victims, children being molested, women being raped, and then you come back in and you do it again and again and again every day. Why do you not just say, I give up and walk away? Well, I think you know the, the biggest thing is from, from the perspective of homicide, and I was a homicide detective, I was a homicide supervisor, and somebody has to be the voice for those victims. They, cannot, they can no longer be their own voice and somebody has to step up and do it. And even for our surviving victims in, in different uh, types of crimes, they may not be brave enough to speak up. And somebody's gotta do it, somebody's gotta defend them, and somebody's gotta provide the justice for them to get those bad people off of the streets so that they aren't uh, committing those crimes over and over and re-victimizing either the same person or new persons. So even though you're dealing with serious crimes, you find a way to find the positive in it. Absolutely. So you have to be that voice and you have to protect the public. And luckily, uh, we're, we're able to do that. Thank you. Officer Brooks, what's the difficult part of the job for you? The most difficult part of this job is the stress. That's internal, external. I think that we... As police officers, we have a higher stress level than a normal person because we um, notice and we see a lot of different things on our daily, daily, day in and day out tasks while we're out on the streets patrolling. So I think that's the most difficult thing of my job is just dealing with the stress. Do you think that the person, any person that does not do this job understands the stress levels, the anxiety that someone ex experiences just by doing their job? I don't think I think I don't think they understand the stresses that we go through on a daily basis because police officers, I want to say, if I'm not mistaken, that we have like the highest suicidal rate. And I think that's part of our high stressors is when we are going through so much and we see so much on a daily basis. Not only high suicide rate, but high divorce rates as well. So, Captain Aubrey, and if you could change one thing about the job, what would it be? 
I would change the lack of understanding and the misconceptions that so many people seem to have about police work. Being a police officer, I think, is a lot like military service. To truly know and understand, you have to wear the shoes and walk it. But I do think it's possible that people can get enough of an understanding and enough of a glimpse of what it's like to where they can have empathy towards the realities and the realism of what we do as police officers. You know, I mean, how do you describe to someone what it's like to administer CPR to a six-year-old or to give CPR to an adult man whose wife and children are two feet away screaming in agony because they know they're losing their father or the emotions that, that we experience when we have to go and give death notifications to people that just out of the blue are told that they've lost a family member and a, or a loved one. And the list goes on and on, the things that we have to engage in, you know, or on those days with the terrible weather where it's raining all day, officers have been out to four or five accidents, there are 50 calls pending, and we go to that one wreck where people have been waiting for two hours and our feet are wet because our boots are full of water, and despite wearing rain gear, we're soaked to the bone. So it's hard to convey exactly what it's like. And situations like, you know, very often we encounter where we're out in the public and we meet parents and they have their children with them. And, you know, very commonly we get the, oh, there's the police, you better behave or they're gonna take you to jail. And I don't think people realize just how many children and youth we deal with that we need their trust, but we don't have it. And there may be a day where that same parent might need for their child to trust us, whether they go missing, get lost, or God forbid, have some other terrible misfortune, then they need to trust us as officers enough to come to us for help. And so that's what I would change is misconceptions and the lack of understanding that people have. I think you painted a great picture, um, but hearing it, I'm like, why are you doing this job? Because what I hear quite often is, nobody told you to do it. We didn't ask you to do it, so why do you do it? I do it out of love. Um, I have great love for people, and I also have a very strong sense of civic duty that I want to serve. Military service runs deep in my family, and instead of serving in the military, I chose this profession as a way to serve and to help. And like Chief said, I think people get into it for the right reason. And all the officers that I know come to work because they want to be part of something that's good. They want society to be safe. They want for their families and themselves what everybody else wants, and to be able to live and engage in the pursuit of happiness and to just live their life to the fullest with joy, safety, and happiness. Very nicely said, Captain Aubritton. Uh, what is the one thing, Sergeant Kim, that you would want the community to know? Um, I'm gonna kinda piggyback off of uh, what Sergeant Al or Captain Albritton was saying. Um, basically, my message would be that in light of uh, the recent portrayal of law enforcement in the media, it's very easy to paint us with a broad brush and, you know, view us as morally corrupt, you know, power hungry and, you know, hateful. But that couldn't be further from the truth. Every day, you know, I show up to work and there's nothing but outstanding people that are willing to help anybody in need. Um, I experienced that firsthand. I'm sitting at the table with a uh, former sergeant of mine for several years and former uh, major of my precinct. And both of them have always gone to bat for me, you know. Um, as long as you do the right thing and they're good people and 99% of the men and women that work in our department are people with good intentions that genuinely want to help people. And tell me, so why do you feel that society only publicizes the bad? I think it's sensationalism. You know, that brings in views for, you know, the news uh, corporations. So um, it, it, it kind of distorts what we really do, because on a daily basis, you know, those kind of incidents that they um, show on the news don't happen too often. 
And Sergeant Jenkins, I'm just going to veer this way for a quick second. So he says that we tend to focus as a society on the negative. So no publicity for the good stuff. Do you feel that way when you're hosting the career development program, when you're out there 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night with the youth at basketball after dark and there's nobody there publicizing that, all of the good that is done in the community? I most certainly think that the media could obviously do a better job of publicizing those things. I think the community, though, I'm going to give them some credit. Um, the, the members of the DeKalb County community that I deal with, they see it a lot. The community work that we're doing when I'm at the basketball program, when I'm at our career development program, not just the kids, but the parents. There are parents that need help. Um, we, the cab, come together to help raise our children, our community. And so every time I'm interacting with parents, I think they see us as individuals. That's what I want our community to see us as police officers. Yes, there is an authoritarian thing where sometimes we have to tell somebody what to do, but I would rather they see us as individuals just like them fathers. You're seeing the pictures of us and our children so that you know we're just like you. Um, we want to come home at the end of the day. And that would be my message, see us as individuals. But I do want to give credit to the citizens. Every time I've dealt with the ones I personally, and that's all I can speak to, I think they do see the Cab County police officers as different. And I, and I would brag on us a little bit with some of the things you're seeing in the media about other departments and just say, I have not experienced negativity from the community personally. I'm sure maybe others have, but myself, I, I get a lot of smiles, I get a lot of handshakes, I get a lot of thank yous, because this department really goes far beyond looking at it as our role as somebody that just arrests people. I think this community realizes that we are here in so many other ways. I'm going to have to agree with you, and one of the things that I've noticed since I've been here and I'm on my fourth year is that we have a great DeKalb County community, and they're very supportive, and they don't fear standing up for us when we need it. So I do agree with you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Lieutenant Harris, what is the one thing you would want the community to know? Um, I would want the community to know that I am just like them. I'm a father. I'm a son. I'm a husband. I live in a community, so I'm no better than they are. It's just, this is my career path. This is what I do. Um, like Sergeant Kim said, there is, there's times when the media can sensationalize some negativity and just lump us all together. But in looking at the media, the cab has not been, on a, been in the news at all about any type of negative things. But I just want the community to know that we, as police officers, we are just like the individuals in the community. We are sons, fathers, husbands, and we live amongst them. So we are no better. We, this, is, this is what we do. Thank you. Officer Brooks, same question. I just wish that the community would back us a little bit more in some of the things. I would like them to say that we are human just like they are. Um, at the end of the day, this is our profession that we signed up for. Um, we, as a whole, we try to treat people the way we want to be treated. You respect me, I'm going to respect you. So yes. OK. So do you feel that you don't get the respect that you deserve? I'm, I'm like, when since I've been going to the schools here for the last year and a half, I mean, we get a lot of negative talk from the students, but I know a lot of it comes from the parents. The parents are putting bad things in the kids' heads, so once they start talking negative about the police department, I just pull them aside and I go one-on-one -on -one conversation with them and tell them that we're not bad people, we're human, and we're here to help them, not to hurt them. And do you feel like you're making progress? Yes, ma'am. I think we are making progress. And if you weren't making progress, would you give up? I would not give up. Thank you for that. So, Sergeant Jenkins, one thing that you would change to balance your job better with your policing responsibilities, what would that be? I think I'm blessed to be in our police athletic league. We spoke earlier about how that particular position affords me the chance to bring my children to work. Uh, one of the changes I would like to see, and, and we would be happy to be part of the team to implement it, is to give that experience to the officers that sometimes are working on the shifts and working on the streets to maybe come up with some kind of program, obviously not a ride along necessarily, but some kind of program where their children would be safe, but they could possibly come in, tour the precinct, maybe sit in on a roll call and get 
the benefit that my children have gotten. I think that would help with their balance of so balancing parenting with work is to let their own children, the officers working on the street, get the same experience my children had. So that's one of the things I would change is looking to help them balance their parenting and job responsibilities by letting their own children see what they do so that they can feel the same validation my sons are able to give me um, when they come to the police athletic league programs. Okay, so you volunteer, so I'm going to challenge you to work on something where we will implement a bring your child to work day. Great. So that's the challenge, and we'll see if you come up with it. Challenge accepted. Thank you, Chief. Okay, so Captain Albritton, same question for you. I would give attention to the small things that are also very significant. Um, Things in our household can be quite chaotic. And over time, you know, we found ourselves going in so many different directions that the the little things that I guess we would take for granted um, become more difficult to do. Things like family mealtime, where the entire family sits down together and and at the table and has a meal together instead of so many going all these different directions. Little things like every day making sure each child gets even a small amount of personal time And along those same lines, making sure that my wife is getting personal time each day, too. And even though we're talking about fatherhood, my relationship with my wife is an integral part of parenting. So those are the things that I would like to see and get back to, just focusing on the small yet very significant things that make a difference in the home. And how did you learn all of this? I mean, you didn't come into the job knowing this. Uh, sadly, through experience, not always in, in the best way. Okay, so if you had to give one of our young officers advice so that they wouldn't have to learn the hard way, what would that be? To stay true to yourself and the things that are important that help them bring the good out that they have to always fo- remember to maintain that and to give that those things the attention that they need so that their better qualities are the ones that are on the surface. Thank you. Sergeant Jenkins, what are your future goals? My future goals with the department is to help the police have lately grow. We're currently a little bit on the smaller side, but we do a lot of impactful things with what we have. But I would look at it as my personal responsibility as I continue to grow in the department and come to the tail end of my career to leave my legacy that the PAL program uh, becomes bigger and stronger when I retire. Uh, I would like us to expand so that we can reach children. I think we're helping children emotionally and mentally. We're giving those tools to them so they can emotionally and mentally thrive. And because of that, I'd like to be a part of growing it. So I see that as my number one goal. So now you're making another request. (laughs) You're requesting additional personnel. I hear you. I hear you. So Assistant Chief Pedrick, same question. What are your future goals as you come towards the end of your career? I don't like to look too far ahead. Um, I I, I tend to live in the moment. And, you know, I've got a lot of work to do uh, here with the department. I guess, you know, looking to the future, I plan to retire. You know, I I plan to fulfill my duties with the DeKalb County Police Department and full retirement with DeKalb County Police Department in in the next few years. But I I focus on uh, living in the moment, and and we've still got a lot of work to do in the department. Uh, So I, I spend most of my time focusing on that. Now, looking further towards the future, I personally, I really enjoy boating. Um, I love being on the water, so hopefully uh, somewhere in the future after retirement, I'll be on the water on a boat somewhere, a boat captain, or or doing something uh, in that arena. So no second job for you? No, (laughs) ma'am. Well, I'll take this opportunity to thank you because, as you said, we still have work to do, and you've been committed and supportive of me since my arrival here, and so I can't wait to continue the next couple years with you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So, Officer Brooks, have you ever had second thoughts about this job and why? I've never had second thoughts about this job. We all have a calling. Um, There are so many challenges that we have to deal with on a daily basis, but I've never second-guessed myself about this job. I think God puts you in this place for a reason. So you have to just follow through with that, that, that path that he's put in front of you to take. You know, I'm trying to understand it a little bit because earlier you sounded like you had a few negative experiences, so you're still motivated, never had second thoughts. How does that work? 
Yeah, I'm still motivated. Um, I get joy out what I do now, especially working in the community as a community policing unit. Um, it's a lot of fun out here when you go to schools and you talk to kids and like Sergeant Jenkins said, when they see you on the streets, like I was working a part time at QT, a lot of the students that I see at the schools, they come in and say, hey, I remember when you came to my school, you gave us high fives and all this different things. So that brings me joy when I'm in the community out doing my daily tasks every day. So it does show that those visits to the school are being effective. Yes, ma'am, it does. Thank you. Aw, Britton, question for you. Have you ever had second thoughts about your job? So actually, at times I have. Um, in the beginning, I was young, single, life was good, came to work, enjoyed it, enjoyed the service and the satisfaction of helping others. And then as time went on, um, got married, started having a family. And then that's where I guess some of the wondering as I would see neighbors or friends of mine who are at similar stages in their life, um, they would go to work in the morning, come home, be home every evening, the whole weekend. And it seemed like I would not just work, but constantly be at part times just for my family to have the things that some of the things that others had with just that one job. So the time that's been committed and the time that we as officers spend away from the home, really that's kind of where the question was. I've never doubted the, the reason for serving. I've always wanted to serve and have loved serving and being able to help others. Um, but I've also seen how there is an impact with time and time's the one thing that we, we can't recoup. Once it passes, it's gone. But um, I, I have always been committed to working and coming in and, and doing the best I can. But yes, I have had times where I've wondered long term, um, could things for my family be better and could it have been better because of a different career choice? Yeah, I think some people may wonder, well, you only work 40 hours a week. And if I heard that, I probably would laugh because I probably have already made 40 hours and it is, I don't know, Wednesday, maybe <laughs> Thursday. I don't even know the days of the week anymore. And so I don't think people realize that this job, you take it with you. When you care about it, the phone's always ringing. There's always something that needs to be done. And when you truly care about this job, you don't just walk away from it. I have called Assistant Chief Padrick, and he has been at soccer games. He has been asleep. He has been doing multiple things. And so I know he works more than 40 hours, and he never pointed that out today, but definitely just very time-consuming job. So I think you've really done a good job at really pushing out the challenges of the job as well as the positive things that we have because this job is one of the most rewarding careers that you could ever have. So I want to make sure that I say that because I don't want anybody to think we're complaining. Um, I truly love this job, and I know everybody at this table does as well. So Sergeant uh, Kim, I would like to ask you, what did you learn from your own father that has made you who you are today? Um, from my own father, um, I view my father as the personal embodiment of resilience. Um, he came to the States in his 20s after serving in the Korean military without speaking a lick of English, not knowing the culture, not knowing where he was going. He just knew that he had to come to the States to start a new life here. He did that on his own. Um, he opened up several businesses, um, several of which have failed, and uh, he's worked hard afterwards and opened up the next one. And uh, he's battled uh, emphysema for two decades. And uh, it came time a few years back where he needed lung transplants. So he's a recipient of uh, double lung transplants. And after the transplants, he, uh, um, his prognosis wasn't good. His, his body was rejecting the lungs. Um, he had septic shock. Um, doctors were telling us that he wouldn't make it. And um, I mean, his will to live was strong because he pushed through and the doctors say that, you know, they don't know how he did it, but he's still going strong now. And he always reminds me um, to always push through, you know, to have an iron will. Um, you know, if there's a will, there's always a way. And um, I think that carries well over into law enforcement. I think it carries well over into you. So I think you're very reflective of your father and I think you represent us well. He should be proud. Thank you. So Lieutenant Harris, I'm gonna ask you the same question. What did you learn from your own father that has made you who you are today? Well, um, I grew up in a single 
family home where it was just me and my mom. So if anything, my mom was both my mother and my father. And just based on growing up, I know that when I had children of my own, I was going to be there for them to provide the guidance that uh, a father has not was not there for me. So I make sure that I'm there. I provide the guidance for them, um, that I'm the strong male role model in the house for them that they need, especially uh, having a son. And I'm able to provide my son with some with the guidance that um, I received from my mom and some of the trials and tribulations that I went through as I grew up as a teenager, as he is now a teenager, and just helping him make decisions. And as for my daughters, providing, again, providing that strong uh, male role model in the household for them, whereas they hear uh, not only the mother's perspective, but the father's perspective as well. And at the end of the day, I, you know, I teach them and I guide them and you know, want to make sure that they are all productive and thus far they're doing what they're, they're doing what they're supposed to do. So while it's sad and nobody wants to live that type of life where you may not have your father in your life, I think you've learned a lot from him. Just learning that his absence made you who you are today. And I think that's reflective in you and what you do. Yes, I know that you have been offered several positions and you've turned them down. Yes, ma'am. You are a uniform patrol lieutenant because you choose to, because when given other opportunities, you said you would not sacrifice the time with your children. So had yes, you ma'am. not had this experience, you would not be who you are today. So let's thank your father for making you who you are today because you should be proud of him. Yes, ma'am. Assistant Chief Padrick. Same question to you. What did you learn from your father who has made you this wonderful man that sits here today? My dad, um, yeah, he really taught me just to, to set the example and lead by example. Um, one of the, the things that I admired most about him uh, was he treated everyone with dignity and respect. It didn't matter who you were, where you were from, uh, he had a kind and, and, and caring heart for everyone that he encountered. So that's something that I take with me everywhere. And I treat everyone equal. I treat everyone with respect. And, you know, everyone matters. So, so, so you know, I took that from him, and that's something that, that I will carry on with me. And I will have to agree. I think I've never seen you be disrespectful. I've never had to question your judgment. You've always treated everybody the same regardless of gender or race. So I would say that he's proud of you. That's what I would say. Thank you. Captain Aubritton, uh, could you give us a message for your children if they're watching? And also, since we won't get back to you, a closing statement, please. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I would want my children to know that their mother and father loved them very much. And I think they know that through the things we say and what we do, despite the challenging moments our family has at times. I would also want to reinforce the idea of trouble can find any of us, even if we aren't looking for it, even if they aren't out looking for it, trouble can still find them. And so to be wise in who they choose as friends and to make good choices and it's hard for children to think about some of the long-term effects or consequences of the choices we make, but some of our choices have lifelong impacts. And I want my children to be strong. I want them to be independent, but I also want them to make good choices, especially when it's something that involves choosing between right and wrong. And as a final thought, I once um, Heard a sermon from a great spiritual leader who talked about the things that we do, the things we engage in, and how we spend our time, that we have good choices or good things we can do. Maybe there are better things that we can do, but probably what's the best thing that we can do? And my message to the community and to officers first would be that as a representative from the command staff, we truly do appreciate the effort that every single officer in this department puts in on a daily basis. And, I, and one of the th things that the people in the department don't get to see is just how some of the leaders, like yourself, the assistant chiefs, and some of the others, r really do appreciate everything that's done. And we also appreciate the support from the community 
And this, to be effective in what we do as police officers, we need the community to help us. And so, and to um, echo what has already been said, that we are people, we are just like the people we serve more so than probably they know. And I want to thank you for being so open and honest today. I did not know so much about you, and I feel like I know you a lot better today. And thank you for that. Yes, ma'am. Sergeant Jenkins, a message to the community along with your closing statement, please. The message to the community, I would also like to just take a second and say to my children that, that I love them. And I, I plan to watch you know, recordings of this with them, and I, and I really want them to hear me that they matter as individuals, that I see them. And I just want to validate them that I see them as individual people. I have two sons, 16 and 18, and I love them dearly, and, and they matter to me. And what I do each day is sometimes helping other people's children, but in essence, I'm always thinking of them. The message I have for the community is, as we've said, we, we're individual fathers who happen to be police officers. You see us in the street, say hi, talk. I've had controversial conversations with people where they have left feeling better about some of the topics they were uncomfortable with. I don't mind talking about anything, so I can't speak for everyone, but if you see me, definitely, we can talk. As long as you're respectful, I'll, you know, we're all respectful, we can work through any of these problems you have with policing. We have the Police Athletic League, along with other community policing opportunities. Seek us out. We are here. We have the Career Development Program to help kids find an after-school job and a career in which we partner with Georgia Piedmont Technical College. We have our After Dark Summer Basketball League in which we're trying to provide a safe place for children and young adults to play basketball from 9 p.m. to midnight. We're doing the work and I would encourage them to find out what we're doing. Listen to our social media pages, listen to forums like this and get involved because we are doing the work. Well, thank you for all that advertising. You saved me a little bit of trouble there, uh, but thank you so much. Uh, Assistant Chief Padrick, uh, being the senior person at the table, uh, could you give me a message for your children and the community as well, and then close us out? Yes, ma'am. Um, I hope it's not senior as far as age at the table, but <laughs> <laughs> um, in all seriousness, uh, my kids already know this. I have, uh, I've, I've been blessed with, with three really good kids, um, and you know, I have no doubt that they know that I love them, that I'm proud of them. Um, I have faith in them, I believe in them, and I'm always here for them. Uh, and as far as, as closing remarks, uh, I, I really want to thank the community, uh, specifically the DeKalb County community, because uh, I have had you know, great experiences with our community, and just like you've stated, and... and uh, Sergeant Jenkins. Sergeant Jenkins stated. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a great experience, and I have no doubt that the community has our back, and at least that's been my experience. Uh, so I, I want to thank them for that partnership because it takes all of us. So, And I'm going to take that opportunity to really kind of tell the community that without them, we can't do our job, and I think we reiterated that in certain ways. So keep doing what you do, and we'll keep doing what we do, and together we'll make a difference in DeKalb County. So no more closing statement. That was it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You. Lieutenant Harris, your closing statement, please. Um, I would just like the community to know that we are human just like they are. We're fathers, husbands, sons. Um, we live amongst the community. Um, as for my children, I want you to I want them to know that I love them dearly. Um, always do their due diligence. Work hard work always prevails, and their name is their brand. If they put their name on it, make sure it's right. Their name is their brand. It will carry them through life. Thank you for that. And I just want to say that out of all the people sitting here at this table, you are the one that has surprised me the most. I didn't think that you would come and participate. <laughs> um, you're very serious. You're about your job. You're taking time out of your busy schedule for us, and I appreciate it. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Sergeant Kim, your closing statements, please. Yes, ma'am. I just uh, want to leave with a brief message to the community that everybody sitting at this table, um, we're fathers first, police officers second. And we're, you'd be surprised how personable we are if you approach us and not be apprehensive and just talk to us. And I implore anyone who's qualified or is interested uh, to apply with the DeKalb County Police. Go you think we're hiring? It. Yes, ma'am. That was a little sarcasm. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. 
That's all, ma'am. Okay, so I will say this before I leave with you, is that you are the one at the table that I knew the least of. Um, but you jumped at this opportunity, and I appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity you gave me to learn more about you and for the community to learn more about you. So thank you. And we're going to end it with Officer Brooks. Please, your closing statements. First of all, I'd like to say that um, tell my sons that I love them. Um, a message for the community is we're here to help you, not hurt you. Um, as stated, we are human. So it only takes one bad apple to spoil the whole thing. If you see one bad police, that doesn't mean that all police are bad officers. And that's my final statement. Absolutely. So I'm going to close this out, but I really just want to say thanks again to the whole panel. Um, I know it's not easy to sit here and be questioned knowing that people are going to be watching this. You'd rather be chasing a robbery subject than sitting here with me. I get it. But thank you so much. And we may not hear it or know it, but I'm pretty sure the community has appreciated this opportunity to get to know you better as well. So as we close tonight, I hope that the community was as touched as I was to hear the stories of the men on the panel. In this constant evolving world, we tend to forget that we are simply just human beings who answered the call to serve and protect. I hope tonight serves as a reminder that our officers are not superheroes. They have no superhuman powers, but what they do have is the desire to protect and serve our DeKalb County community. Please don't forget to wish the fathers in your life a happy Father's Day this weekend. I encourage you all to monitor our social media pages to stay in the know. We thank you for allowing us this time to give you a peek behind the badge. Good night, stay safe, and we will leave you with some of the reasons why we serve. I serve because it is a great honor for me to serve the community where I reside and my family resides. I want to see the people in my community succeed. When people need help, I want to be there. I want to help improve the quality of life here in DeKalb County. Because it gives me a sense of purpose. I enjoy helping and working with others, and that allows me to be something greater than myself. I serve because DeKalb County is where I belong. I want my family to have a safe place to live and work. I want to make my children proud. To serve the community and help those in need. I have great love for people and a strong sense of civility. I wanted to give back to the community that had given so much to me as a kid. The Officer Friendly Program had a large impact on my life as a child, and I wanted to have that same influence on the children of DeKalb County.